deception. And it, it's hard message today, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And at the end, we're going to find out a little bit about the light. But i got to tell you the truth. The whole truth is nothing but the truth. So help me God. As I say in the corporate. But if I didn't tell you the whole truth, I'd be deceiving you. And deception is like an echo. Anyway, God will be good. Let's go to Lord's Prayer before we get started. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for a beautiful day. Thank you for your Son, Jesus. We praise you and we love you so much for sending your Son. You didn't have to, but you did because you love us. And Lord, I ask you if there's any other spirit other than the Holy Spirit in here this morning that it would, we, we command it to leave in the name of Jesus here this morning. We don't want any other spirit other than the Holy Spirit. No divisive spirit, no deceiving spirit, no other spirit, but the Holy Spirit of God. Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit rain down on the hearts this morning that they'll come to know you as Lord and Savior. And one here today that uh, is being deceived, and they might think they're in a right relationship with you, but they're not. Lord, I ask you to reveal it to them here this morning that they'll become that they will. Be saved here today. Lord, forgive me my sins and uh, remove me from all things here this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. All right, so we'll turn to Genesis chapter 3. <coughs> We're going to read verses 1 through 13. Right past the verse 13 is the uh, uh, main. Main verse, I guess you can say. Uh, but I'm going to give you Webster's definition of deceive. It is to cause to accept as true or valid by what is false or invalid. Did you catch that? That's what deceive is. Deception. The art of deceiving is deception. To Cause someone to accept as true or valid by what is false or invalid. So basically, you believe in a lie when you're in the Okay, if I got that good. Now, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made, and he had said, Woman, yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not sure die, for God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of, the, eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves naked. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking, Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The Lord God called to Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, He told thee, Who told thee thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to me, be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. The Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Well, beguiled means deceived. All of this, God said, Y'all have it. You can do whatever you want to. Just do not eat this truth. But the devil, the serpent, we're going to find out a little bit more about him in just a minute. Hmm. 
He came. <laughs> And he preyed upon the lust of the eyes and the flesh and the pride of life. All that morning right there. Boy, that, that tree. Did you see what he said? He's pretty. Here it is. You're not going to die. You'll be like God. That was the pride. Oh, I'm going to be like God. It is pretty. Oh, I bet it tastes good too. My old bar will never fruit but. Boy, it's good, Adam. Try some of it. Okay. That's how I do it. Okay. I love my wife. She's a very wise person. And I trust her. And of course, Adam wanted no better. God never said don't eat that. But he was deceived too. Well, she did eat it. I don't want to too. Well, guess what? Come God. What do y'all do? God already knew what he's done. Ladies and gentlemen, if you think you cannot be deceived by the devil, you are dead wrong here in this world. Adam and Eve walked in the cool of the garden with the most holy God. Talk to him. Mm -hmm. Face the. Mm. That's good. We're going to get to it when we get to heaven. Yeah. That's going to be good. Adam and Eve, boy, they just, they just left. For a piece of fruit so they could be like God. And they were walking in the cool of the garden with him. Oh, mm. no, that's good right there. Can you imagine walking and talking with the most holy God, your creator? He's giving you everything. Giving you a job in the most beautiful place, the most perfect place. Ain't a thorn or a thistle nowhere. You planted beans, you got beans, and there wasn't no weeds in it. <laughs> Come on, can I get a witness? Don't you just love weeds? No. That's how it was. Couldn't do no wrong. <laughs> We're going to be like that again. We'll get to that here a little bit. But I'm going to tell you, Devil is an adversary. He's a worthy adversary. And I'm going to tell you, if you try to find him in your flesh, you're going to fail. Saved or lost. You can be saved. You can be saved. You can be deceived as a saved person. Devil can deceive you. I'm going to tell you right now, you can, you can be deceived by the devil that you are saved. Now? Yeah. Hmm? Can I get a witness? Amen. I mean, come on. And they can also deceive you. Mm. Mm -hmm. I could be good enough. I'm not that bad of a person. Come on. Mm -hmm. Illustration time. I didn't know when to do it. I'm going to do it right there. Y'all know what a duck decoy is? Amen. You know what a duck decoy is? Amen. Okay. The duck hunters use decoys. The duck hunters. Guns. Boom, boom. Whack, whack, whack. Boom, boom, boom. Man, y'all know what y'all are coming from now. Y'all want a duck dice. Y'all know you do. It's a good show. It is. It is a good show. I don't even think I just got to catch it on every now and then. Dr. Tony Evans here, he, he, is, uh, he gives us an illustration. I'm going to say, today these duck, duck hunters use decoys. Today decoys, these decoys have got pretty fancy. The decoys, they quiet like ducks, they move like ducks, they look like ducks, and act like ducks. In fact, the ducks, they, they are ducks. And the real ducks end up being dead ducks because they can't tell what's true. You know, I'm going to give you a little application. Y'all probably already know. The 
says, for the Christian, there are many roaming decoys out there, and their job is to extricate us from the intimate experience of our faith. Our relationship, they're there to cut you off from your relationship with Jesus Christ. We must look beyond what a person says or how they perform to determine their authenticity. We must evaluate and test the spirits. We must be on guard for decoys being all around us, acting like the real thing in order to receive to deceive. <coughs> I'm going to tell you right now, the devil is all about deception. All about it. If you don't think he is a one tub cookie, you're wrong. Let's look at uh, Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. Let's look at let's look at the devil. Let's look at it. <coughs> everybody know, does everybody know where the devil comes from? Don't try to find out what it is, man. Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nation? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. <clears throat> I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. <laughs> Satan got cast out of heaven. What now? He was the most beautiful created being there ever was. <coughs> Read about it in uh, Ezekiel 28, I believe it is. Oh, he was the anointed chair. The chair of the cover. He was the choir leader in heaven. Worship leader, I guess you could say. He says he's hot. I mean, he's sacred. Look it up in the Ezekiel 28. It's, it's awful. Look in Revelation chapter 12, verses 3 and 4. I want you to look at The devil was master to see it. Verses 3 and 4 of Revelation 12 says, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. That's the that's Satan. Having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head, and his tail grew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast him to the earth. And the dragon, was, dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. He deceived a third of the angels that was in heaven, and they were cast out of heaven with him. They were created by a most holy God. Angels. We're not angels. We're created in the image of, of God. Praise the Lord. We should be a representation of a holy God. We're going to learn that in our marriage class. That's the one. That's the one. Mm, these angels, they, the devil's so good at the deception. He brought angels out of heaven with him. They were up there with God. If you don't think you can be deceived, you're wrong. Wrong. <coughs> it's wrong. The devil is the master deceiver. He's behind it all. It started in the Garden of Eden. And it hasn't stopped since. Man. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. You may have second Corinthians 11, 13, 15. Second Corinthians, sorry. Put out there. Second Corinthians chapter 11, 13, 15. <coughs> The devil knows his ultimate destination. That's why he's trying to deceive everybody else, so they have to go there too. The Bible says that hell was created for the devil and his angels. And that's it. The Bible also says that hell has to enlarge herself. Why? Because of disobedience. They don't care about God. People don't care about God. They want to do what they want to do when they want to do it. Look, look in 2 
Corinthians 11, 13 through 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Hmm. That's powerful. Yeah. Satan transformed himself into angel of light. Ministry. And then his ministers, his angels. Remember, the devil, Satan can't be everywhere all the time. God can. God is everywhere all the time. Satan can't be. Well, he's got his little minions. What have y'all seen in the movie? Minions. Little yellow creatures. What is that? Despicable me? He's got his little minions out doing his job. What dirty work for him? Yeah. You don't blame me. Great God. There is a war going on above our heads, and if we saw what was going on, I believe I'd have a heart attack right now and die. God. We don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against. Preach it, brother. Preach the pattern. Ruler of darkness. That's what we fight against. The deceiving works of the devil and his minions. The demons. The spiritual warfare. That's what's going on. <clears throat> you can make Colossians 2 8. The wire lest he may spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men. Look at that. Tradition of men. And after the rudiments of the world, that means principles, the system of the world, the worldly system. And not after Christ. Look at the word spoil. That spoil, y'all you know the, what the uh, saying to the victor belong the spoils? Well, that's what that is. For where lest any man spoil you, defeat you, take you captive through the philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men. Oh, tradition of men will get you in trouble. That's the way we've always been, Brother Adam. Well, I'm sorry if it's been wrong for that long. You've been doing it wrong. For all, all they said you've been doing. Boy, it's hard to talk to somebody when they sit in their ways, ain't it? I tried to one time, but I got fired on it. Just because you've been doing this for 30 years don't mean you've been doing it right. But praise God, he, he don't care if you've been doing it wrong for 100 years. You can still get saved. You can get it right. Get it right here today. Even though you've been taught false doctrine all your life, I'm telling you the truth right here this morning that Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Right. He's the only one that saves here this morning. And if you've been taught any other way, it's wrong. If you've been taught, baptism will get you there. Good work to get you there. Being faithful to the end. It ain't Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And he says, you're going to get there if you go through me. Right. You're going to... Mm, that's at the end. I've got to slow down. This is good stuff. <laughs> First, 1 John 4, 1. John gives us a warning here. So, I used to be kind of gullible. Kind of naive. Somebody tell me something. Well, I kind of, well, that might be right. You know, I'll just they're my friends, there. Sure, why not? I'm gonna tell you what, don't do that. Unless you absolutely positively know beyond the shadow of that, they tell you the truth. And then you better back get in your Bible and make sure. I want y'all to look up everything I say. 
And if I misspeak, you tell me. I will apologize very, very quickly. I've, I've done it before. I messed, I've done, I messed up in my brain and my mouth mixed up connections <coughs> and then we come out from it. And the Lord said, that wasn't right. And I got to looking at it and said, you're right. That wasn't right. I had apologized the next week. <laughs> But don't let you die. Look, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Well, how do you try the spirits, Adam? Well, 2 Timothy 4, chapter 4, or 2, verse, mm. verse 2 tells us. It says, preach the word. And they just preach it. Paul was talking to Timothy, a hey, preacher, but this is for everybody. Preach the word. Be instant. In season, out of season. Prove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. He said, be grounded in your faith, in the Bible, in the Word of God. Nothing else. Nothing else. Because why? This is the, in verse 3, for the time will come, they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own work <coughs> shall they heap to themselves as teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, from Jesus. Jesus is the truth. And shall be turned into fire. They'd rather listen to John Henry than they would listen to the preaching of the Word of God. That's a fable, by the way, John Henry. What's that logger with the op babe about the ox? Paul Bunyan. Paul Bunyan, that's it. That's a fake Paul Taylor. People would rather peep to themselves, itching ears, stories like that, making you feel good, and let, instead of listening to the truth. It's a hard sermon to preach today because it's hard. Deception is a big deal. That's the devil's game. Don't be deceived. Be instant, in season, and out of season. When you don't feel like reading the Bible, read it anyway. Because you know what's going to happen. The devil's going to come in and everything. You don't need to come. The devil ain't ugly, by the way. He's the most, he's beautiful. Yeah. If he was here right now, he'd be the fanciest dressed, the most eloquent speaker, had the nicest haircut, nails be done. He'd say, come with me. Walk you down and just lead you away from the truth. That's what happens when you get out of the truth, out of the Word of God. He takes you places you don't want to go, but He think, makes you think you want to go to them. That's not every messenger, Adam. You're right. I don't know how many of you have been, have been deceived like this. This one's smoke from the heart, doesn't it? This one drunk. This one. This one deal. This one. This one chew. Everybody's doing it. This goes on in your mind. I ain't talking about your peer pressure. This goes on in you. This is a war going on in your head. I had it. it mm. Y'all had that war going on too? Mm -hmm. This one. This little snail. That cloud ain't gonna blow up. We make a lot of money. When the devil deceives you, when you got that thought, he owns you. He's got you. I'm gonna tell you right now.
We might have you to say it here this morning. But at judgment day, he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. And you're not going to get up there and say, hey, look, look, I did this, I did that for you. He said, I don't know who you are. You didn't accept my son as your Lord and Savior. You might know the Bible, but you don't know my son. <coughs> Galatians 6, 7, and 8. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Hmm. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh, shall in the flesh reap forever. <coughs> He had sold the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, life everlasting. <coughs> you may be deceived. The devil may have you deceived. You may. There's many being deceived, and have been deceived, are still being deceived right now. They're preaching the false doctrine. They're, they're, they think. They're right with God, but they don't know Him as Savior, and they don't know Him as Lord. <clears throat> They're making millions of the Word of God. You're being deceived that they're doing the right thing. Paul said right there in the Galatians that God is not going to be mocked. Don't be deceived. God's not going to be mocked. You're not going to get there and say, Yeah, God, uh, I give a million dollars to uh, that church over there. Come here, right? But God, I, I preached 30 years. Thousands got saved. Millions got saved. He said, That's nice. I don't know who you are. God's not going to be mocked. You sow to the flesh, you're going to reap to the flesh. Corruption, destruction. You sow to the Spirit, you're going to reap life. Okay, turn. That already gets you going. That, that's good stuff right there. And all this, this is, this is hard to hear. It is. I got some good news. Revelation 20:10. And the devil that received them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone for the beast of the cross of and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Guess what? That devil that's, wrong, that's roaming about seeking whom he may devour, who's accusing the brethren before a holy God right now, saying, Look at them. Look at them. You, they're supposed to be a child of God. He's presenting a redding accusation, the Bible says again. Look at it. He's going to be cast in the lake of fire. The great deceiver won't deceive anymore, but he's going to be cast in the lake of fire. But there's one more one. Later on in that passage, it said uh, those that were not written in the Lamb's Book of Life were also cast in the lake of fire. Later on in the verses there. So don't be among those that were deceived by the great deceiver here this morning. To be cast in the lake of fire meant for the devil and his angels. Adam, there's got to be got to be some positive going on in the sermon. Got to be a, there's got to be something. Got to be a way out. Well, there is. John six sixty eight. Now Peter, this is after feeding the five thousand. <coughs>
Here's what Peter says. This is what you can cling to right here, right now today. Then Simon Peter answered him and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the word of eternal life. Who? Who are you going to go to? <coughs> You're going to go to your mama or your daddy, your brother, or your sister. They can't say Jesus. He said, Lord, who, who, where am I going to go? You have the words of eternal life. And Jesus said in John 8, 32, You cling to the truth, Jesus. He says, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And in John 8, 36, closing with this, If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Amen. From all deception. Anything that's got a hold on you, Jesus said, I will set you free and you will be free indeed. Those that are doing the invitation to ask them to come.